Hello, how are you all doing? So uh, here's the thing, tomorrow I'm actually going to Hong Kong for 10 days. So excited for it. Our flight is quite early, it's at 6 a.m. So the wake up is gonna sting if we manage to sleep. Um, but today I actually thought I would take you along with me while I kind of like pack my stuff and share with you everything that I usually do when I prepare for trips. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna put you right here um, and I'm gonna be trying to pack my stuff at the same time. I'm gonna attempt talking and folding my clothes at the same time. So let's see how it goes. My first tip is actually to create a personalized travel bucket list. So what that is, is really like stuff that you want to see or do while you are traveling in the city or in the country. Because what I realized from my past travel is that you, no matter how long you're gonna stay in a city or a country, you're not gonna be able to do and see everything. That's just the reality of things. Even if you stay a year, I spent a year in Bali and yet I have not done everything. And that's totally normal. And I feel like that is actually very much okay because I don't know, I think you should actually focus on doing things that are going to bring you more value and more like joy, you know, because maybe not all the experiences are going to be great for you, you know, depending on your vibe and what you'd like to do in general in life, kind of like try to curate your experiences around that. So for instance, if you are someone that loves adventure and you like to do like outdoorsy stuff, then maybe some of the experiences of the city, like museums or so, are not going to be the best for you and that's totally okay. And I feel like you should actually maximize the time that you have a way to really do things that are going to create like the best memories for you. What I like to do in regards to that is actually take some time to um, learn about the city and the country, kind of like go through the history very like on the surface. And so that gives me like a better understanding of the culture, the people and what I can be expecting there. And so I usually do that either by reading about a city or watching a documentary that really helps as well. And then I usually kind of also get a sense of like the neighborhoods and like the vibe of each neighborhood, but also the main attractions and like the main things not to miss. And according to that, I kind of like make my own list of things that I absolutely do not want to miss, things that I want to do and see. And also um, while reading about like the culture stuff uh, usually what really comes up is like the foods that you absolutely need to try while you are in this country and being a foodie I just love kind of like experiencing a country through its cuisine and like through its like different mix of foods. I would also make like a food bucket list which contains like maybe five to the ten foods that I absolutely want to try while I am there. And I'll search for like the best place where I should be trying them, the more local places, and I'll go ahead and save them all in my map so that when I'm walking around in the city, I have my eyes on where they are and I can just stop and try them. Same thing goes for the restaurants. Uh, my fiance and I, we really like to try like the nice restaurants. And so when I'm doing all this research, a lot of names are coming by. And what I'll do is I'll just like save them all in my Google Maps so that when we are hungry for lunch or dinner, we know where to go. And sometimes I'll even go ahead and book them. Depending on the cities where you're traveling, some places can get really busy really quick. And if you want like to go to a nice restaurant, you know, um, booking them in advance does increase your chance of having a seat at the table there. So yeah, that wraps up my travel bucket list planning part. Another thing that I love to do while I'm traveling is really making sure I have like an intention list that I did before. So those are basically more like personal goals that I want to have, you know, during this trip. So for instance, one of my, a few of my intentions are that um, lately I've been really into to self-development and one of the things that really have worked for me was spending time alone and um, journaling and really trying to like have more connection with myself so during this trip I really want to continue on that note and that means maybe I'm gonna go for solo walks around the city and I'm probably gonna like visit some cafes and sit down with a nice cup of drink and then like journal
journal at the same time. Um, another intention that I have is that um, so this trip is also our anniversary trip with my fiance. So obviously I want, really want to make sure that this trip is going to be full of love and that we really are intentional about creating the best memories together and just having a lot of fun together. He's going to be really busy because he's going to be working at the same time. But the time that he has free, I really want to make sure that we are doing like the most together. Another intention that I have is that so lately I took up painting and sketching as a hobby and I'm really loving it. It is so nice to just like sit down and sketch or paint and just like let go of everything. It's very therapeutic. So what I want to do is at least one day to go to a spot where there's like I don't know some nice architecture or nice like site and just sit somewhere do some people watching maybe get some snacks and maybe get a, like a nice coffee and just sit there with my sketchbook and sketch you know just like do that for an hour or so and one last intention that I have for this trip is that I want to make sure that I'm taking care of my health um, mentally, physically, everything. So that means making sure that I am doing enough movement every day. So usually when I am away, I walk a lot around the city. So um, I'm thinking every day I might be able to check off like the 10K steps, but in the eventuality that this is not happening, I know that the hotel has like a little gym. So, you know, kind of like squeezing like a 30 minute workout just to make sure that I have my movement in, but also, um, you know making sure i am eating the right foods and i'm having a balance between indulging but also like you know taking care of my health um i know that too much sugar too much carbs is not that great for me it puts me in a slump so i'm gonna be mindful of that and also as i said um one thing that really works for me for my mental health is journaling so i'm gonna be very intentional and setting the goal to journal every single day it doesn't have to be like this 30 pages of journaling sometimes one line works but just like taking the time to have like this conversation with myself i think is really important so that is kind of like my intentions for the trip another thing that i love to do when preparing for my travel is actually creating like a travel routine so the thing is that I am going to be going to Hong Kong, but I am not going to be 100% holidaying. I work remotely, so I'll still have some work to do. And having a routine, I feel like it's going to help me really balance between doing the exploring and discovering, but also kind of like staying on track with all my tasks and not like falling behind. So um, I'm very lucky because I work on a European time zone. Therefore, I am not going to be starting to work before 3.30, 4pm, which gives me like the whole morning and early afternoon to explore and then the second part of the afternoon i know that i will be working so this already helps me kind of you know divide my day into the two parts but i also like to have like a special routine for like waking up and starting my day usually it's with you know um, a little cup of coffee and some journaling and i like to end my day a certain way as well and i find that you know just having like a little routine will help me stay grounded during my trips because i just find that i am someone that really thrives on habits and repetition and what i've seen is that you know too much newness throws me off too much and then like i just don't feel like i'm my best self so having that small travel routine is gonna make me feel like you know i'm not that far from home it's gonna make me feel grounded and it's gonna reassure me and also make me feel like i'm in control of my days which i really love so that was kind of like the first part of my travel preparation and for me that is actually the most important part of the preparation because if i don't have the, the routine if i don't have my travel bucket list and if i don't have my intentions i feel like i would not make the most of my travel so I usually take like a few days to do that. And then the next part of the preparation is usually the packing, which is very basic for me. Um, and it usually takes like an hour if I'm not talking at the same time, but it's fine. So usually what I pack is I learned that I have a tendency to overpack and I feel like we're not, I'm not the only one in this case. And so, because like last time, for instance, I traveled, we went to Vietnam for two weeks and I realized when I came back that 
I did not use two thirds of the things that I packed. I just packed because, oh, what if we went there? Oh, but this top would be so great in that situation if that situation happened. So the name of the game for this trip is going to be under packing because I learned the hard way and this time we're not gonna repeat that mistake again. So what I did, I was actually going on Instagram, looking at some photos of Hong Kong and kind of like watching some vlogs on Hong Kong as well for like learning about the place. And what I saw was that, you know, the vibe of the city is very much elevated, sophisticated, very classy and chic. And I'm just gonna kind of like go with that. And in that regards, I thought maybe I will just like pick a few colors that I truly love and that makes me feel that way. Kind of like mix and match between those items. So my colors for this trip are black, green, white, and nudes, and I feel like they're very interchangeable and they work together really well, so that's gonna be helpful. And then for my skincare, I usually have like a very basic pack that I use when I'm away. Um, makeup staying, it stays very concise and precise, nothing too special there. And however, I am going to pack some face masks because I feel like after a long day of walking around in the city, you're coming to your hotel, you're having a shower, putting the bathrobe on, which feels so nice, you're sitting in bed and maybe, you know, a face mask in that moment just fits the vibe. So I'm gonna be bringing a couple of them. And then, um, oh yeah, one trick that I have for you is to learn a few hairstyles before traveling you know and like kind of like practice them a little bit so that you know in the days and the moments that you want to feel a little bit more put together and a little bit more special you have some hairstyles up your sleeve that you can just like throw it on in like three minutes you know because i've been confronted to the situation where i wanted to have like a low bun kind of moment happening i'm watching the tutorial and it is not working like i am not able to redo it so what i usually do is i have like a couple of hairstyles that i know how to do really really well and i kind of keep that in my mind and on the nights that i don't want to have my hair down as usual i can just like Put it on and i'm gonna be feeling so much more fancy i think i covered everything in my travel preparation process um let me know how you plan your travels i am so curious to know i still have a lot of folding and packing to do i almost did not do anything while talking to you which was kind of like predictable but so i'm gonna focus on that and um during this trip i am also planning to do daily vlogs and post them on youtube shorts it's a format that i really want to try and so if you want to see how hong kong goes then stay tuned and watch out for the shorts and also check out my channel subscribe it really means the world um thank you so much for your time i really appreciate you all and I'll see you very soon.